Look at this bad boy of an e-bike. Let's get on the way and go. All right, guys. We are on the Rave Bullet GT e-bike. I know a lot of people have been raiding for some like real reviews on this bike, kind of using it around town, just having a good old time with it. And finally, I'm actually getting to it. It's been a hot minute since I've been able to do anything. Just because we've had so many projects to do. We're working on the Rev 1. We had the Spark Bandit to do. I was also going to get some Suron suspension. That never actually came. We do have some white wall tires coming for this bike also. So this is not going to be the last video I make on this bike. I'm going to do another video when I put the Speedster tires on this. Because I actually think we're going to pick up some top speed. Um, something I do want to mention is this bike does not come factory 28 miles an hour you actually have to go into the settings and change it um that's something i can put down in the description or just leave a comment if i forget and i'll tell you exactly how to do it it's very simple or go watch my review video on this bike as well and you guys can see exactly how to do it now i'm doing these videos a little backwards but i'm still going to put this video out after i do my review on it just because i kind of want to get a feel for the bike so right now you're going to see we have a uh, 2.9 miles on the display and when I actually do my video review, I'm gonna have more miles on the bike. Um, I'm gonna pull over here by the church really quick and I wanna show you the bike and then we'll really, really start deep diving and talking about this bike and how it compares to some other bikes out there on the market. All right, so here she is parked out in the sun. Let me stand on this side because you can get a really good look at this paint job. Now, this bike over pictures and online and stuff like that, the first thing I wanna mention is it looks bigger in the pictures. This is actually a very tiny bike. Now the seat height on it is I think about like 30.7, it's almost 31 inches, um, but you can also sit more back here. I sit kind of right here in the middle, but it's, it's a little cramped, I will say. I'm about 5'10", 160 pounds. So you guys have an idea as we ride and do this 14 mile trip. But I wanna just say that the bike is smaller in person. It feels a little bit more compact. It does feel light, even though it does say it's like 89 pounds. This bike definitely feels very light to kind of maneuver around and lift up and move. And I, maybe just because it's so compact. It's still not a bad bike. It's very, very comfortable. That's the first thing I noticed on this bike. And in this video, when we do the 14 mile trip, we're going to see how our range is with the 20 amp hour battery. This is a 48 volt system. It is not as fast as the ride one up. We could talk about that a little later if I remember. But I really want to see what the range is going to be on our battery bars because I have a full charge. I also want to check out the headlight and the tail light. Now this headlight is from the Rev 1, so it is exactly the same. So I'm expecting it to be like phenomenal because this headlight, maybe it's cheap out in the market for these companies to put this on there. I love it. Whatever headlight they're using, more companies didn't use that. That's all I'm saying. The headlight is badass. And I think the best part about this bike is just how it looks. You got the red spring, the green paint. I actually asked for the green one and surprisingly I was like, cool, it's going to be different. Everyone's going to have the black one. I'll have a green one. I'll be able to show it off a little bit, but no, everyone else got the green one. So I was like, oh man, <laughs> maybe I should have asked for like the yellow one or something like that. And so it could have been a little different. Now, one thing that's already making noise, and this is something I noticed when I was uh, riding the bike, testing it out for the first like three miles is the brake pads now the company reached out and said hey the brake pads are bad we're going to send out some other brake pads because they're squeaking that's actually not the problem with this bike so go back and watch my review video when i talk about it a little bit more but that is not what's actually making noise so you know the two allen bolts that you loosen for your uh, brake caliber like bracket to kind of slide it over to kind of align the brake pads in the middle of the rotor well the thing is it's actually hitting the rotor so when you hit the brakes the brake pad squeezes in because the brake pads are, you know, squishing it, but it comes in contact with the brake uh, bracket. And that's what's making that noise. So over time, when you do get, you know, miles on this bike and stuff, it will get better and better and better. But uh, that's something I noticed right off the bat. So what I had to do is I unloosened the Allens and I pulled it as far as I could away from uh, the brake pads. And that definitely got rid of the constant squeaking 24 seven and as, as I was going up and down the street. But the thing is, I still hear it every so often when I slam on the brakes or use them, especially when turning. So uh, that's just, I think, a little oversight on the bike when it was built. But it's not ruining the bike in any what whatsoever form or nothing like that. It's still a great bike to ride. It's just a little bit of an issue, but that's exactly how you fix it. Just align the brake pads more off to the side so the brake bracket does not touch the rotor, and then you're good to go. Now, 
the other thing I noticed when I first got this bike, after I noticed how small it was, I thought it was going to be a lot bigger, is uh, it's not very powerful. It has a 25 amp controller in here. It's a 48 volt system, 20 amp hour battery. So I was expecting it to be like decently fast, you know, but it's not that great. It's not that powerful. 750 watts, but it also feels like it's 500 watts. I'm, and I'm just being real with you guys. It doesn't feel that powerful. It's very nice and gradual to get up to speed. It is definitely a nice bike to use and ride around, don't get me wrong, but it's just not the best. So if you're really trying to stay in traffic or beat traffic, maybe you gotta like get in and out of traffic, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go this way real quick. Um, it's just not the best. And someone is calling me. Let me pull over here real quick. Oh, <laughs> is that you? Oh, that's who was calling me. Okay. That's my coworker. She's the one calling me right now, but she's just speeding. She's not waiting for me. <laughs> Let me pull over here for a second. Hold on. I'll give her a call back and see what she wants. I think it was just to say what's up because, uh, I was just riding around and she just happened to see me because I think I passed her right on that other street back there. So if no one's over here, we'll pull over because it's like a sketchy area where people uh, do drugs and break in the cars. I'm not kidding. You might think I'm joking around, but there's always something bad happening over here. Hello. Hey, what's up? Are you on your bike? Yeah, I thought you were going to wait for me and then you took off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. I got a brand new one. <laughs> oh, good shit. All right. I don't work, I don't work today, so. Oh, boo, you suck. All right. Now, I'm going to get on my way and go. <laughs> All right. So, where were we at talking about? I got a little distracted. I was like in the groove. We were talking about this bike having a good old time, and I totally like forgot exactly what we're talking about it's not fast at all i think that's exactly where we left off at is just you know like you gotta plan out where you're gonna like weave in and out of traffic depending on if you have to go that way or you know you just got to get around traffic it's just not fast enough to uh go in and out it's like almost having a very slow car but you need to overtake a car to go around or something like that and you just can't do it you have to basically break and wait to go behind like everybody else so i like faster cars because i like to be able to speed up and like merge in like that car right there would be the same thing like that's not going to be very fast trying to weave in and out of traffic it's just not going to happen um but i like it though I, I really feel like it's comfortable whatever they put in the seat is phenomenal it feels like one of the best seats ever it feels just like the rev one i like the styling of it i like that it's very very long if you guys can see this so if you're a shorter person just like the spark bandit we talked about a little while ago you can you know definitely move up to the front and then you can definitely move all the way to the back so i'm like sitting on the very back of it feels very comfortable as well and you could probably fit like a child on here as well too so if you want to bring someone the only thing is you don't have any pegs for this bike so uh they're gonna have to be dangling their feet somewhere but it's a cool bike i i really dig it for the price all i'm saying is don't expect this bike to be fast when you get it and don't expect it to be very big now for my height i don't have a problem sitting on the bike I don't have a problem with the pedals. It feels very natural. I do feel like my legs come up a little tiny bit taller than most e-bikes just because it's a little cramped. It's definitely not as cramped as the Ingway M20. That bike is absolutely insanely small. I did not like it. I don't understand why a lot of people like that bike. I mean, it is a dual battery bike, so I get that, but that bike was, uh, I didn't like it at all. It felt very cheap. I feel like they cut a lot of corners just to have a dual battery setup so you can have the most range out of it, but it just wasn't practical for everyday use. But anyways, now let's see how this bike does coming up hill. Like I said, not very powerful. And I think that's the same car I was just talking about, that Leaf. <laughs> uh, 22 miles an hour coming up this thing. It feels closer to about 20. I haven't GPS this bike yet. I probably will on my review video that I'll do shortly after this. So you, like I said, you guys might want to go back, check out that video. I'm going to post it up before I do this one. But uh, let's see how it is coming downhill. We got a little bit of wind going with us. Uh, 27, 28, 29. Oh, man, that sucks. Come on, Rave. Oh, 
that that's disappointing so this bike has like a uh, cutout feature so it's not giving me any power at all most bikes will just continue the power even if you're going downhill and this bike does not so that kind of sucks it kept me down to like 27 miles per hour it like hit a peak and then it was like nope you're cut off and then it just kind of went down so that's kind of garbage i will say <sighs> since this bike is not very fast i have to hit the button to go across which sucks why are you looking at me lady yeet so look how look how slow this bike is maybe i got um very excited with the spark bandit that thing just takes off like a bat out of hell for being a like e-bike e-moped and it looks straight like an e-bike you know this thing looks like an e-bike too it actually you know what i will say this bike looks less than an e-bike than the spark bandit because it, the, how cool it looks i think this bike the best thing it has going for it is its looks it looks super cool i love the framework i love the the, the paint the paint reminds me of my Honda Civic. It's like that cypress pearl green color. I love it. It's exactly why I wanted the green. But, you know, like I said, everyone got the green, damn it. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I've been liking all the guys' videos out there. Everyone's that's been reviewing it. Um, everyone's been very positive. The company has been very good for everybody. Like, in the group pages, they've been responding to everybody. They've been updating people on the shipments and what's going on. And they're legit. That's the best thing I think I like about this company is their communication with all of us. Not just our influencers like me or Shreddy or whoever else is getting this bike, but just they're very communicated with the whole entire uh, community out there that are looking at buying this bike or bought one themselves. Now, the other thing I wanted to test out since I'm really the only one out here after I passed that guy is I wanted to see how this bike handled turning. Get this. So every time I turn, the power cuts off. And that might just be because we're right at that like 28 mile like limit. You can't go any higher than that. So when you do unlock this bike, that's as high as you can go. It's 28 miles an hour. It might've been 40 kilometers, which is I think 28 miles an hour. So it doesn't allow you to do anything over that. That kind of sucks though, man. Like, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of that. They should have just unlocked it so you have power all the time, but I guess the positive with that is that you'll get more range because it's cutting power to limit you to 28 miles an hour. And realistically, you're not supposed to go over 28 miles an hour anyway. Woo. So uh, coming down that, that was not too bad. Like coming off the curb and going into the street. It was comfortable, but I felt like something bottomed out on this bike, but it still wasn't jarring. It still felt okay for my weight, which is 160 pounds if you guys forgot. So not too bad. Now coming up this hill, oh a Tesla. I'm like a squirrel, I love Teslas. Uh, 26 miles an hour coming up this hill. Yeah, we got a running start, but it didn't really phase it at all. It's, it's still climbing. Now we're basically topped out. See how look, it hit 29 miles an hour and then it's just like, no. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat though is uh, we went down two battery bars, but after coming up the hill and now going downhill, now the power cut off, we went back up another battery bar. But I mean, I don't really like how this battery bar is. Can you switch anything? So you got trip, you got time. Uh, here's the power. Oh, okay, cool. That's I didn't know it had power. So this is 675 watts right now of power we're doing. That's cool. Miles, odometer, trip. Yeah, so you don't have voltage on here at all. That would have been nice if they had a voltage reading on this bike. All we can really do is go off the battery bars and... Uh, I don't know, get a rough estimate of where I think the battery range is at. And I know a lot of you guys have been waiting to see how the headlight and the tail light and all that kind of stuff looks, but um, it just takes this bike so long to get to work. It's a little bit longer videos because I'm sitting here talking the whole entire time and most bikes will take me roughly like 15 minutes. I feel like this one took me a little longer because of how uh, slow it is. Still nice though. I'm not knocking it. It's just not a fast bike. All right, so we're here. I'll see you guys in about uh, five seconds. Oh man, don't be making noise now. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll see you uh, in the field. All right, man, later. All right, let me get my helmet on. Let me get suited, done with my work shift. Try to get out of there a little earlier just so I can get this video done for you guys and go home. I got the next day off. Just gonna have a nice day 
Maybe go to the movies, play some video games. I don't know. But anyways, I am excited to uh, check out all the lights on this bike. So we got to turn it on. The display does take a while to turn on. Some people say they like the display. I'm not a big fan of the display. Um, the only way it turns on, like backlit, is when the headlights and tail lights come on. So you do have to hit up this uh, up arrow. You got to hold it for a while, and then the headlights come on. Then you can actually see the display at night. Because you can't see the display at night if you don't have it backlit. But, I mean, you're going to have your lights on regardless anyway, unless you're riding somewhere where you can, like, see everything, and you don't really need them. But, anyways, we'll uh, start riding this bike, pull over to the side of this bike trail, and we'll see how these lights look. But, for now, we'll kind of get an idea. And, honestly, I'll tell you right now, I already know that the front headlight is going to be dope. It's the same one as the Rev 1. I'm just really curious to see how the rear tail light looks. Something I've been having a problem with this bike is doing the kickstand because the way the bike is designed, I keep forgetting the kickstand is way back there. I don't know why. It's just this bike for some reason. And I've seen a lot of other people say the exact same thing. Ooh, what happened to the brake since I last rode the bike? <laughs> it is definitely making some noise now. What's going on here? Ah, I just ran over a roach. All right, so check this out, guys. Look how awesome this headlight is. I knew it was gonna be fantastic. This thing is amazing. This headlight is like a 9.5 out of 10. It's, it's beyond like perfect for like riding an electric bike. You can't go wrong with it. Time to go through it. Yep, time to go through it. I'm going through it. Come on bike, go, go, go. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh, that was a little rough, but this seat absorbed everything. It is so comfortable to be on this bike. That's the best thing I love about it. First off, the look. Second off, how comfortable it is. Now, uh, let me pull up in between these lights. We do this every single time we uh, take a bike out here. All right, I'll pull off right here. I'm going to have to turn my watch off because it keeps going off. I'm getting tired of it. That may be beyond my abilities at the moment. I don't care. Turn off. God. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start leaving my watch off when we do these rides because my uh, gloves keep holding the button and it picks up what I'm saying and it tries to read everything. Anyways, this is gonna take a second to turn this off. All right, so there you go. This is pitch black, uh, no lights other than the street lamp up here. The other one is behind me. So this is with it on. So I'm gonna turn the, the thing on right now. It takes about two to three seconds after holding it. The light doesn't come on automatically. There's no ambient like sensor in there to you know see if it's daytime or nighttime. So you do have to hold the up button every single time to turn the lights on. And I feel like I align the headlight perfectly. Now you can move it really close down if you want, depending on if you like it like that. I might actually move it ever so slightly down if I can. I, I oh, <laughs> I was gonna say I really tighten these uh these bolts in there. All right, that looks good. That's decently far enough to see, and it's very bright. I love the fact that. The light isn't like flooded out on the bottom right here compared to uh, the Spark Bandit that we rode. So I like the fact that I don't need lights right in front of me. That is perfect. You want to be able to see farther away from me because you're going to be going 28 miles an hour on this bike. Now, another thing is, well, it's pitch black out here, really no lights. Let's see how this uh, tail light looks. Okay, um, not bad, not bad. I'd probably give it a... Maybe a six and a half out of 10. It's not the brightest, but it's not the darkest. The Spark Bandit was really, really bad. The Aerial Rider Kepler, that was really bad. Um, there was another bike I can't remember that I reviewed that had the same light as the Aerial Rider Kepler. Um, I didn't like that light either. And I'm trying to think of what bike that was. But anyways, that's not bad. Um, let's see if it works with the brake levers. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, so dang, look at that. Can you guys see how uh, bright that thing is? Check this out. Holy moly. When you actually hit the brakes, this thing is like an 8 out of 10. That thing is bright. You also have a reflector back here. Um, I personally would remove it um, if I was you guys. I mean, you guys can do whatever you guys want for your bike. I don't want to be the safety guy out there and tell you what to do and what, you know, what's safe and whatnot. But what I will say is I wish this was not here because it's blocking a little bit of the light from the top, like, coming out. So if you still want to keep this on, just move it to the side or move it to, like, one of the sidebars or something like that. But... The reflector is really blocking the light from shining from the top. But I'm liking it so far. I'm definitely able to see at night to uh, ride around. And I remember the, the kickstand this time. I always for keep forgetting. Um, another thing is too, oh, I was wondering why we're going so slow. It always is going to start off in mode number one. 
no matter if you set it to mode number two or three and then you turn it off it doesn't have a memory function like some other bikes have been having in 2023 um so that's just something you got to remember um i do think it has a zero mode cool it has a zero mode so then the throttle isn't gonna work and then you can pedal the bike like normal if you really want i'm fully pedaling right now and the bike just keeps losing speed even with the gears on there so all right so check this out so i'm pedaling right now i can pedal 14 miles an hour roughly that's as fast as you can go anything above like 15 miles an hour you're ghost pedaling all right so just keep that in mind but the fact that you have the option to go down the mode number zero is nice if you just want to pedal this bike and not having any assistance whatsoever that's probably something i should do with all the mcdonald's i eat but it is what it is you know i'm not gonna do it <laughs> i'm gonna put it in the highest mode you can go which this bike doesn't go to mode five like normal bikes do it only goes to three which i guess is fine but i do kind of like having five modes because you have more of an adjustment of you know how the power comes in and the top speed and all that stuff this one you're just kind of limited to i think uh it might be 10 then like 20 and 30 or close to it you should let's try that right now actually okay so i am in mode number one throttle only and we're hitting roughly 12 miles per hour so let's put it in mode number two and see what the top speed is on mode number two god this feels so slow to me to be real with you guys mode number two is roughly 15.916 miles an hour if you guys can read that display it should be readable because it's very dimmable right now it's not very bright yeah so 16 miles an hour in mode number two and then to get you know 28 27 miles an hour you have to put it in mode number three I would have liked the scene, you know, like maybe like 8, 12, 16, 24, and 28 or something like that. So you have a little bit of adjustment of uh, the actual speed you want to go instead of just being limited to only three top speed numbers. If I'm making sense when I say that, <laughs> um, sometimes I say stuff and it might not be making sense to someone because I'm thinking about something in my head, but it's not coming out correctly. But um, yeah, it's not too bad, man. Uh, I'm gonna tell you guys right now though, if you guys are a true e-bike enthusiast, this is not gonna be the bike for you. This is more like of a starter e-bike. It looks cooler than anything. The company is really good. They're working with everybody. So I feel like if you need a part replaced, I think they're really gonna be supportive of everybody. You know, it's not gonna be like, oh, they're just gonna forget about you. That's kind of the thing that's been happening with Ingway lately. A lot of people have been like upset with Ingway with their bikes having issues and they can't get a hold of anybody, which really sucks. You know, when you spend this much money on a bike, this bike isn't cheap. I mean, I would say the work that they put into it, like the style of the frame, the color, the color is probably one of the nicest things on this bike. The little touches like the red uh, shock, you know, the headlight, um, everything that kind of goes around it. I understand why it's priced the way it is. The power wise feels like this bike should be cheaper, but the looks wise, I feel like the bike is priced right. But really guys, don't get this bike if you're planning on hauling ass everywhere you go and you're, you know, are all about getting up to 28 miles an hour as fast as possible. Maybe you wanna go in, in traffic, try to like, you know, get ahead of everybody at like a red light so you can switch over. You're not gonna be able to really do that on this bike. If you really want a bike to do that, look at the Spark Bandit that we just reviewed. The Rev 1 is definitely another contender that you guys should think about looking at. And then also look into the Lyric Graffiti e-bike. That is an awesome bike. The only bad thing is it doesn't have suspension in the back, so it's not as comfortable as this thing. This bike is like, this feels like the Rev 1. It just feels a little bit more compact for comfortability anyway. Like it feels like a dream to be on. I'm trying to think of some other bikes that you guys might want to think about. I'm trying to think about the Super 73. I don't really like comparing everything to a Super 73, but you know, they're well known. They have a big corporation. I mean, they got tons of people working at that company and they are a huge e-bike company. And I want to say this almost feels like my RX in a way, but the RX definitely had more power. And obviously it had more top speed. I think I got 31 to 32 miles out of my RX. And especially now that they have the update on the RX, this thing doesn't compare to the RX, but you can't really compare this against it. I just throwing it out there because I know a few of you guys are gonna probably say like, well, how is it to the RX? You know, even though it's just kind of in a whole different category, you're looking at like, what is this bike? Like 1800 bucks, 1799. The RX is $4,000. 
I would say maybe it's comparable to one of their, uh, I don't know, what's their suspension model that they have now? I don't know. I don't really follow Super 73 too much anymore, but they have to have a lower quality e-bike that has suspension, but it's not the RX because you don't really compare this to RX, but I can't think of it offhand. But uh, I wouldn't really go with any of the Super 73 bikes unless you're going for like style over speed. But I will say this bike has it too. It does have the, the style, just not the speed. The only reason I would say to ever go with a Super 73 over any bike in the market, including this one, is the community and the parts. All the companies that make parts for the Super 73 is beyond fantastic. It's like a Honda Civic. You can get any single part you want from it from multiple companies, not just one company making the same part. And that's pretty cool. This bike is so new on the market, no one makes anything for it. Now you're going to find grips off of Amazon or your local bike store or you know, brake pads or brake cables, and you can't change out the seat. The seat is proprietary uh, to this bike. Um, you can switch out the headlight to something else you want. Just look at the plug and play uh, waterproof connections and make sure you order the right thing that's gonna plug into your setup. You could change out the tires, all that kind of stuff. You can get different fenders for this bike too if you want. But what it comes down to is uh, the battery. There's really no other batteries you're gonna actually be able to fit in this bike because I feel like this battery is proprietary to this frame. You're really limited. If you really wanna get more range out of this bike, you're gonna be buying probably a secondary battery from this company and keep it in your backpack or strap it to the bike somehow. Now they do have this little section right here, if you guys can see it, you guys have probably been watching it all along as I've been riding, looking around the video as I ride around, checking out everything. Um, this has a plate right here and it has two bolts. I have no idea what it's gonna go to. I don't know if the company has announced anything as of yet. Now I am gonna be putting this uh, video out a little bit afterwards after i make it so maybe the company will release something i have seen some people put bags right here and i don't know if they're like cutting out the bottom and like screwing it down to hold the bag in there i'm not 100 percent sure how people are doing it but i'm pretty sure you could fit something right here which would be pretty cool because it's just a big open space you can have something that comes up to here maybe you can have something i don't know this guy's just chilling all right <laughs> i was like what the heck is this guy doing I feel very weird being in the street with this little e-bike. It is definitely small on the road. <laughs> That's just something I wanted to let you guys know when we first started this video. You know, it is compact. I feel like if you want to get it for uh, like your son or your daughter, I'd probably say at least make sure they're probably over like 13 or 14 and make sure, you know, you kind of watch them as well. But, um, I feel like anyone can really get on this bike and feel very safe because it doesn't take off out of like out of hand. It doesn't have an aggressive like torque curve or anything like that. It has, it has a thumb throttle, so you can't go wrong with that as well. And it's very comfortable overall, and you're definitely going to get a lot of decent range out of this bike. Um, we are down to three battery bars. Um, one of the battery bars is very, very tiny in that corner. That one scares the hell out of me. I don't know where you're at on battery level when you hit that. <laughs> um, the other two are very big, but uh, yeah, we went down uh, two battery bars so far, which is not terrible if you think about it. And I really think this bike should get decent range because I've already said, like it cuts your power at 28 miles an hour. It doesn't want to keep going. The Rev 1 and the C3 Strum, actually the C3 Strum, I take that back. Um, it does hit a top speed of like 35 on the C3 Strom Astro Pro, but it limits your power once you hit like 35. The Rev 1 does not do that. Once you hit like 37, 38, the power is still up there. It's not cutting your power. It's just limited to how fast the bike will go. It's trying to go as fast as it possibly can when it's in off-road mode. This bike limits you exactly at 28 miles an hour. Now, I know we're rambling and rambling and rambling. I get it. I'm sorry, guys. But um, the company is coming out with a bigger version of this bike. And it's gonna be called, I think the GTX, and the X stands for extreme, which I'm assuming means it's gonna be a little bit bigger. I'm hoping it's gonna be a little bit taller. I'm not too mad about sitting at about 31, is it 31 inches or something like that? I wouldn't mind like 32 inches. Um, I would love the bike to be longer, but I'm not exactly sure if it is or not. Um, but I heard that that bike is going to go about 32 miles an hour. If I'm not mistaken, I think 32 miles an hour, which I'm very excited because that seems like the bike to get if uh, you're a little bit on the taller side. Now I'm 5'9", 5 5'10", 5 and I don't have a single problem sitting on the bike. I just can tell from being on multiple bikes, it just feels a little cramped, but 
it's no Ingway M20 bike at all. This is definitely a lot more comfortable than that. I don't feel like I'm, you know, too far forward. Plus, you kind of move the bars a little bit out if you want. I didn't really adjust the bars too, too much. If you guys saw my unboxing video I did, I was sitting in front of the bike, tapping the wheel back and forth to try to get it right. And I didn't really mess around with the, the handlebars too much. I just kind of left them and tightened them up. It took me forever to tighten them going back and forth, back and forth, so I don't strip anything. Um, one other thing that I am a little bit disappointed about the company is the fact that they did not give us any type of affiliate codes to help you guys out. They do have $100 off. I'll put everything down in the description so you guys can save whatever money you guys want on this bike. It doesn't help my channel out whatsoever. So the company doesn't know if I sent you to the website to buy a bike. The only way they might know it is if you actually have to contact them over the phone and talk to them. Maybe that's the way to do it, but at the same time, they're not gonna know if you bought a bike by checking out my videos. And I make no commission off it. All I do is I get the bike for free, I get to sell it at the end of the day, and that's pretty much it. So I'm a little bit disappointed on that. I'm not like terribly mad about it. I love reviewing stuff regardless and they were very easy to send me a bike. They weren't like being a hassle about it. Like most companies are like, we need this, we need that. We need like 40 pictures and stuff. We need people sitting on the bike and pictures of that. We need an Instagram and TikTok posts and YouTube. Like they weren't like that. So I was totally down to do it for the company because it looked like a hot bike on the market to ride as well. And real quick update, uh, we're down to two battery bars. Oh, and another thing too, there's no regen on this bike. The brakes are fantastic. They have a little bit of squeakiness to them. Um, I think they said on their second bass they're going to be changing out the pads and everything like that. Hopefully they're going to fix the bracket in the front. They did send me an email saying they were. So hopefully they uh, see what's going on in the front because I definitely saw the issue on the front. I fixed it. Um, and you guys probably saw it in my review video as well when I talked about it. If I was you guys, I would probably hold off on buying the bike only because they're going to be coming out with a GTX probably in like June or something like that. So I would just hold off and wait to see if that might be the bike, the bike for you. But if you are very short, like probably 5'4", 5'5", five, 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 um, the GTX is probably not going to actually work for you because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a bigger bike than this. So then I would say 100% buy this bike. But don't buy this bike if you want a fast bike. Buy this bike if you want a comfortable ride, casual, and it looks badass. I think it looks badass more than anything. It's probably like one of my top like three e-bikes that I've seen that I love how it looks. The paint job just looks like a car paint job. It looks badass. But anyways, um, it's towards the end of the video, guys. You can check the links down in the description. Let me know what you guys think. If you're going to think about buying it or not or waiting for the new one to come out. And let the company know that I want to review the new one. I think that's going to be the best bike to review from that company. Well, I come in hot with my squeaky ass brakes. Everyone's going to wake up right now. <laughs> All right. But anyways, um, so you guys know we did 14 miles on this trip back and forth. It's technically 6.8 if you want to be technical. And uh, we're down to two battery bars. Now, I know if we sit here for a little bit longer, this is probably going to go up to three battery bars. I'm going to say that the bike, I don't know, like, I, I can't really call it on how how good a range that is. Like, are we on half or what? I, I can't really tell. I'm not too sure. Um, this is off, I will say, if you guys can read that, uh, 5.7 miles of a trip. So that's off a whole entire mile. And minutes, we've been on the bike 17 minutes coming home from work. Uh, that's our power. I should have put it on power just to check. Our max speed was 30.2 miles an hour. I think that's when we were coming down um, one of the overpasses. Our average speed was 20, which is pretty high because I don't I don't go very slow on these bikes to go as fast as possible. But um, gorgeous looking bike, very comfortable. You can pedal it up to, what did I say, like 15 miles an hour. After that, you're ghost pedaling. Decently sized battery. It's going to get good range, or it should anyways. I am very worried about those battery bars, though. The best thing I would say to change out on this bike, though, is going to be the tires. I didn't really harp too much on the tires, but not a big fan of them because you can get a flat on these. So I'm going to replace them with those white wall tires and uh, see how those do. And I'm hoping to pick up a little bit more speed. So hopefully you guys stick around for another video. I'll get those swapped out and then we'll see how it is because they sit a lot taller. So our torque will go down, but our top speed should go up. We'll see, though, because this bike does limit you after 28 miles an hour or so. We'll just have to check it out. All right, later guys. All right, that's gonna wake up the neighbors, not me, all right? He did it, not me.